in mainland Spain, uh, the, the Spanish is completely unique from the other 20 Spanish-speaking countries in the world in that they're, they're the only country to use a ceceo, which means that it's what people call, refer to as the lisp, but it means whenever there's a C or a Z letter and the C makes an S sound, then you pronounce it kind of as we would in English, the, almost. So an example is um, heart is corazón, shoe is zapato, and there's a phrase that in the MTC we always said is an example, like an extreme example of the ceceo, it's priesthood civilization, but in Spanish, in like Latin American Spanish, it's civilización del sacerdocio, but in mainland Spanish, it's la civilización del sacerdocio. So you have a lot of that, that ceceo. And there's a rumor going around, it's been going around for years that it started because a king of Spain way back in the day had a lisp and I'm pretty sure that's not true. I've read that it's just a rumor, but I'm, as far as how it came about, it was just, just changes over time and it, it stuck. But I don't think no one like can really pinpoint the exact moment where that became part of the, the Spanish lexicon. One other distinctive feature of the Spanish in Spain is that they have a pronoun vosotros, which they will not, they won't teach you in the Provo MTC because you can't use it as a missionary. So it's, it's to refer to a group of people that you're, that you're familiar with, uh, either your friends or your family or children. Uh, so instead of saying, hola, como están? Like, hey, how are you collectively as a group? You would say, hola, como estáis? And de donde sois, like where are you from, instead of de donde son, or um, like to come in to come in the door instead of saying oh pasen pasen, you would say pasad, with a with a d on the end. So that's really really interesting. And as as missionaries, you can only speak vosotros to children under the age of twelve. At least when I was in the mission, that was the rule. So to the primary kids, we could speak in vosotros. Uh, but it was always kind of awkward when I tried to speak it because we weren't allowed to in other other times. And also Spaniards, they use tu a lot, which is the more uh, the more friendly, the more casual, informal version of you. Instead of usted, they say tu. So we, we would always teach, when we, whenever we were teaching a person, we, we could only speak to them in usted, the formal... Um, yeah, the formal version of you, but they would almost always say, no, tu te ame, like speak to me in two, and we would say, oh, no podemos, we can't, uh, sorry, and we'd have to explain it, and it was kind of hard for them to understand, because that, for them it means, like referring to someone in two instead of usted, it means that all of a sudden you have, that you have this friendship and trust, and that you're in their, in their circle of, of friendship, I guess. So those are, those are the two main things in, in mainland Spanish. In Canarian Spanish, they don't have either of those things. Like I said before, the Spanish there is more similar to Caribbean Spanish. Uh, so they speak en ustedes, um, just usted and usted to refer to one person or a group of people, always. They don't use vosotros at all. And also they, they use the ceseo, which means the C and the Z sounds that form an S, that sound like an S. They just pronounce them like S, like an S, like um, corazón, uh, zapato, um, other examples. I can't think of any right now. And also an interesting thing about Canarian Spanish that really threw me for a loop when I got there is that they don't pronounce, they kind of aspirate the S's on the end of words and just barely, if even, sometimes they just don't pronounce them at all. So an example would be, um, oh, ahí están los elderes, instead of ahí están los elderes, they're the elders over there, los elderes. And also saying the name of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, la Iglesia de Jesucristo de los Santos de los Últimos Días, they pronounce it, la Iglesia de Jesucristo de los Santos de los Últimos Días. So they leave off the S's. So lots of times it was it was hard to tell if, like if they were talking to me and they said, Elder, como esta? Like I, I didn't know if they were talking to me in usted or tu, because como estas or como esta, kind of difficult. But eventually it, it caught on, and I, I would say most missionaries serving in the islands end up speaking like that 
because it's really fun and kind of communicates a more a more laid back uh, laid back chill relaxed um, vibes <laughs> I guess.